Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you are having an amazing day. Let's get right into the stories. The first one is an entitled people story. Growing up on my family's farm was an idyllic childhood. I always knew I wanted to take over the farm when I got older. After college, I moved back home and my parents retired and moved to a smaller house in town. The farm was finally all mine. I love the peace and quiet of country living. My nearest neighbor is over a mile away. It's just me, my dog, and all the animals on my 500 acres of land. That all changed a few weeks ago when I noticed a huge RV parked on the back corner of my property. At first, I figured someone was lost and pulled over to check their GPS. But after a few days, I realized whoever it was had set up camp back there. I hopped in my truck and drove back to investigate. As I pulled up, a middle-aged blonde woman emerged from the RV. Before I could even open my mouth, she started lecturing me. It's about time the owner came down here. Do you know how long I've been waiting? Three days without a word from you. I figured you wouldn't mind if I parked my RV here for a little camping trip. I stared at her in disbelief. I do mind. This is my private property. You can't just park your RV here without permission. She scoffed. Don't be silly, I'm only going to be here for a few weeks. I needed a quiet place to relax. I thought you'd understand. Now I was really getting annoyed. No, I don't understand. You're trespassing on my farm. You need to leave immediately. That's ridiculous, she said. Do you know who I am? I'm Catherine Ross, head of the school board. I suggest you let me stay here unless you want trouble. I shook my head. This woman was unbelievable. I don't care who you are. This is my property, and I want you gone today. Catherine glared at me. How rude! I'm friends with the mayor, and I can make things very difficult for you and your little farm. It's just for a few weeks. Stop being such a difficult man. I'd had enough of her threats. I'm calling the sheriff right now to report this illegal trespassing. You have one hour to be gone, or your RV will be towed. I turned around and walked away as she shouted empty threats at me. True to my word, I called the sheriff and explained the situation. He agreed to send a tow truck out in an hour if she was still there. I watched from my house as the hour passed. Catherine made no effort to leave. If anything, she seemed to be settling in even more with a lawn chair and fire pit. Right on time, the tow truck arrived. The driver knocked on Catherine's door to inform her she was being towed, but she refused to come out or move the RV. Eventually, the driver just hooked it up and towed it away with her still inside. A few days later, I received angry calls from Catherine and even the mayor. They demanded I pay to return her RV and threatened consequences for my rash actions. I politely informed them that I had acted fully within my legal rights to remove an unwanted trespasser from my private property. I also let them know I had reported the threats to the sheriff. After that, I didn't hear from Catherine again. The mayor also stopped calling once he learned the truth of the situation. The story spread quickly around our small town. The general consensus was that Karen finally got what she deserved. People were tired of her entitled behavior. In the end, she paid the impound fees to get her precious RV back. I was just relieved to have my peaceful farm back. The animals seemed happier without a stranger causing chaos in their home. This whole ordeal made me very wary of unknown vehicles pulling onto my property. I decided to install fencing and gates around the perimeter just in case Karen or anyone else got similar ideas in the future. My grandfather left me this beloved farm, and it's my duty to protect it. Dealing with a deranged Karen on my own land only reinforced that. She thought she could bully me into letting her stay, but I stood my ground. The law was on my side and justice was served. Don't mess with a farmer on his home turf. The next one is a pro-revenge story. So we had a temp covering maternity leave who turned out to be a bit of a nut job. She was the executive assistant, or EA, to the deputy CEO, and seemed to think this gave her some sort of status. We'll call her the temp. I had spoken to her twice, maybe three times, and was incredibly nice. I make it my business to be pleasant to everyone. What she didn't know was that about a week after she started, I knew she was sending daily complaints, all unfounded and untrue, to my manager about me. My manager and I get along socially and professionally, and he was dumbfounded by her behavior. I still have no idea why she targeted me, and until today I'd put her out of my mind. Hey. We're talking about three or four complaints a day, and she was asking for things to be taken further, wondering why I wasn't getting warned or reprimanded, whatever that meant. What set our alarm bells ringing, though, 
was one day when I was leaving early. I asked her in person to cover something that afternoon. She was nice about it and said, no problem. I have flexible hours and accumulate a lot of time in lieu, so I'm not always there from 9 to 5 like other staff. Often I stay late or work on weekends, so I have built up hours. I let my boss know when I'm using them. We have a complicated leave system, and neither of us wants the paperwork, so I always need to clarify when I work those hours and when I'm taking them. We keep our own records. On the day in question I called my boss and told him I had spoken to her, and she was covering for me. Later that afternoon my boss called me and said that she had asked where I was and who was going to do the job she had agreed to cover for me. She denied that we had a conversation, and then she complained about my hours, claiming that I hadn't been there for extended periods and making up days I wasn't present. We had a record of my hours, of course. My boss explained that my job often kept me away from my desk, and I was available on a company mobile that she could call any time. She didn't find this sufficient, and basically demanded that I report my whereabouts and duration to her. This is a temp position, and even the CEO doesn't expect me to do that. So, why does someone barely age 21 not in my department and not even working full-time, expect it? After she left, my boss contacted the person sitting next to her who confirmed that I had indeed spoken to her. We knew we had to keep an eye on her. Here's where her actual downfall began. At work, we only supply long-life milk and coffee. Everything else belongs to the staff. This is widely known. It was clearly stated during their induction, and I had emphasized it. Don't take other people's belongings. What's on the shelf marked staff is for sharing. I order all our supplies, including office supplies and tea, coffee for staff and conferences. So, the few emails I received from her were complaints about running out of things she was using. I would remind her that it was mine and she could use a bit but needed to get her own. I can't stand long life milk, so I always bought my own fresh milk. Surprisingly, this becomes relevant later on. Her complaints kept coming and became worse. She even helped herself to a few microwave dinners, and others were also complaining about their stuff disappearing. Her complaints persisted, and I would respond by email, repeating the same thing over and over. But she insisted that staff should be provided with the items she mentioned, and I had to replace them. She threatened to report me to her manager if I didn't comply. I told her to feel free to share her complaints with management. I always encourage people to bring any issues they have with me to management, as I can explain or justify them. However, she never went to her manager. Instead, she continued sending more and more secret emails to my boss and even others, making up conversations we had never had and altering emails. Yes, it had escalated to this point. My boss would approach me with printed copies every time, and I would show him my original email replies. Since I never knew when she would email, having these original copies served as further evidence that I was telling the truth. He trusted me, but the independent staff member double-checked for reassurance. We decided to mark the server tapes we used for the backup on that day so we could quickly retrieve them if needed. We documented everything, including incorrect timelines and false claims. Other staff members verified that her false emails were indeed untrue, so we mostly started to ignore her constant complaints. Her boss was aware of what was happening but chose to ignore her behavior. She even advised my boss and me to ignore the temp's complaints. Meanwhile, other staff members were reporting her increasingly strange and vindictive behavior. The deputy CEO even apologized to my boss, me, and several others, asking us to disregard the temp's actions, as she didn't want to go through the process of rehiring with only two months left until the regular EA returned from maternity leave. With management's approval, we decided to ignore the irrational temp. If you're thinking that the top managers in this place aren't doing their jobs properly, you're correct. I planned to endure this job until my wedding expenses were covered, and then I would leave. So, this situation didn't really affect me. I just didn't want to lose to a moron at this point. I knew she was building up to something, and I wanted to witness her downfall. Anyway, her actual downfall began in a dreadful twist of fate. Her boss unexpectedly had to go on personal leave for an indefinite period, and a replacement was hurriedly brought in to cover for her. Just two days later, the bombshell dropped. The original EA wouldn't be returning and the temp was offered a new short-term contract until a permanent replacement was found. Fortunately, this wasn't an extension, but a completely new contract, putting her on a three-month probation again. The new deputy CEO wasn't familiar with the situation, 
and the temp was escalating her efforts in a bid to secure the now permanent position. With her old boss out of the picture, she began including her new boss in backdated emails addressed to my boss and me, making it seem like I had been part of the conversation chain the entire time. She escalated her complaints, aiming to portray herself as someone struggling against unresponsive opponents. Recognizing the rise in complaints and her increasingly hostile behavior towards me behind closed doors, we prepared for what was coming. We had maintained a running record, so we decided to respond with kindness and wait. Finally, the day arrived and she made her move. Can you believe it started over milk? Despite growing older and presumably wiser, I still love milk. I often have a glass with my lunch, sometimes even more. Don't judge. It's just a personal preference. On this particular day, she was in the kitchen as I retrieved my milk from the fridge to take to my desk. As I was leaving the room, she said, Don't you think it's rude to take it all? Maybe some other staff members might want to use that. Having had a bad day and being fed up with her behavior, I told her she was too ignorant to read emails, so I would remind her once more that it wasn't for staff. Her response was, We'll see who's stupid, as she walked out the door. I immediately texted my manager and said that D-Day had arrived. True to form, about an hour later, the HR person, our HR services were outsourced, came in without her usual stop by my desk. My boss had thoughtfully printed out everything and was ready to support me. When I was called into the room, I feigned ignorance. The new deputy CEO had a thick file that the temp had put together, and she started to criticize me based on the contents, referring to files, times, dates, and more. Since the deputy CEO didn't know me personally, and the HR person wasn't familiar with our day-to-day -day interactions, they seemed to be buying the temp's act as the victim. When I was asked to defend myself, I requested my boss's presence and mentioned that I had one or two emails that could quickly resolve the situation. My boss entered with a stack of all the evidence we had gathered. This included her edited emails, exchanges between my boss and me, my time records, job lists, logs, and even invoices disproving her complaints about things not being done. I then offered to provide a list of tape numbers from the backup that would demonstrate that she had altered my emails, along with a list of staff who had witnessed the comparison with my boss. Finally, I presented various emails between the deputy CEO and me outlining the situation. The deputy CEO and the HR lady exchanged glances and then stated that they no longer needed my presence. The temp's tears turned to hysteria, and she was livid. She called me a liar and claimed that I was only doing this because she had rejected my advances. Then she shifted to claiming that all the staff members hated her and that this was a grand conspiracy to get her fired. She ranted on for about an hour, accusing the staff and especially me of betraying her and threatening legal action. I was honestly taken aback by how someone could feel so victimized. We're a relatively small workplace. And while I wouldn't call the staff my best friends, they're generally nice people. This is a positive work environment. Yet this individual made it sound as if she were a beleaguered Cinderella being tormented by ugly stepsisters. The last time I saw the temp was as she was escorted to her desk to retrieve her belongings, and then straight out the door, wailing like a banshee. Today, she called seeking a reference, but she won't be getting one from me. I'm not concerned about my managers not doing their jobs properly since I plan to be out of here in six months. They're covering my wedding expenses and then I'm leaving. If you've read this far, thank you. And to the temp, I can only say, duck you, I win. The next one is a petty revenge story. I had a problem neighbor for so many years. He would terrorize the area. He was a drug addict and dealer, which is his business, but don't make it my issue. As a result, we always had unsavory people popping up, breaking into houses, cars, stealing packages, etc. I know it's related to him because he had previously admitted that his friends were doing it, and I've seen CCTV footage from other neighbors showing his friends damaging cars, etc. He's stolen bank cards that came in the mail, makes the most obnoxious amount of noise that wakes me up, and his friends, fiends, almost always ring my bell in the dead of night, around 2, 3 a.m. I've shouted at them so many times, and have argued with him too. My neighbor has also been in prison multiple times for various things, including very serious crimes, so he should do well to keep his head low as a free man, you'd think. We live in a house converted into apartments where there are four apartments and a main area downstairs to walk through, 
where mail goes. He always leaves the main door open, which I'd asked him not to do, so his friends can come and go. Sometimes they'd kick the door down and trash the area. Whenever I'd get a package and I wasn't home, the couriers would leave the package unattended in the front garden or the main area outside my door, despite me instructing them not to. My package would be stolen by my neighbor his friends in seconds. This went on for years, and when confronted, he'd deny it, but I knew it was him. The other two apartments are occupied by old people who I am friendly with and who also dislike him. The issue is, I never had any proof. I once called the police after he wrote a note to me apologizing for his friend stealing my package, but that went nowhere. This time I wasn't going to let my over 250 pounds worth of stolen packages go unnoticed. I put up a camera in the main area. I saved the boxes from some other packages and placed an apple and some plastic bags in them for weight, set them outside, and within five minutes they were stolen by his friend who hadn't seen the camera. Gotcha. I called the police, who commended me on my setup skills, and they came over. But by the time they arrived, the guy had left the building, with packed bags that were definitely filled with drugs to sell. They told me they'd look out for him. A few weeks later, I got a call from the police about it. I also told them I'm absolutely certain he sells Class A drugs and has been terrorizing the area. They told me they'd pay me a visit. Five days went by, and at 7 a.m., I got a call from the same officer asking me to open the door quickly and quietly. I did, and she told me to go inside, but not before I saw about 15 plainclothes officers hiding behind a wall. I looked through the peephole, and they all stormed inside, kicked down his door, and arrested everyone inside. It was basically a crack house, as well as seized boxes of drugs. All of this was caught on the camera I bought, so I sent the footage to the landlord. The police also got in touch with the landlord, and thus, my neighbor was evicted on top of it. This happened a month ago. None of his mail has been picked up, and I'm getting a lot of joy out of this. Moral of the story? Keep your hands to yourself. The next one is a malicious, compliance story. The year was 1995. My grandpa was always one of those sly men who knew how to make his way to the top of any situation, sometimes regardless of the cost to others. But while shady... He was for the most part a decent human. This story isn't about his dubious side, though. It's about how he was able to build the tallest house in town, even though it was against the building code for the county. A general contractor bought a property in this small town and just started building without getting the proper permits for the house. The house was already framed, starting to get sheeted, and had the roof built when the building inspector was called to the property. Of course, he shut the construction down, the contractor was missing permits, and the house was too tall for what the code allowed. So the job was red-tagged and shut down. The general contractor couldn't afford to tear down the house and rebuild, so he just walked away. My grandpa heard about this and went to talk to the bank to see if he could buy the property. He offered them 250 k for it, but the bank denied his offer and said it was going to be auctioned off. He decided he was going to show up for the auction. On the day of the auction, the only other person who showed up was another contractor from town, whom my grandpa knew. He talked to him and basically laid it out like, I really want this property, and if you will just walk away from this one, I will make you a partner in the next property I buy. And in a small town like that, my grandpa swore a gentleman's promise and the other contractor walked away from the auction. They started the bid at 200k and my grandpa offered them 100k, the bank ended up selling for way less than my grandpa had originally offered. So he owns the lot, and instead of demolishing the house that is half built on it, like the county inspector wanted, he just decided to bring all the mistakes to code, keep everything revealed for the inspector, and continued to build on the house. The county inspector heard that instead of being torn down, my grandpa is continuing to build on the house and drove out there immediately. When he confronted my grandpa, my grandpa showed him that he had brought everything to code. The inspector told him that the house was still too tall for what the code allowed and needed to be demolished to a legal height. My grandpa simply replied, Well, that's easy. I'll just import some dirt to put around the first floor of the house. The inspector became frustrated and left him to build. My grandpa was smart like that, but then, the whole reason I know this story is that my grandpa let my family move in with him after this house was built. While my dad was paying Grandpa rent for us to be there, Grandpa drained the equity out of the house, didn't pay the mortgage, and bailed, leaving us homeless once the house was foreclosed. 
So it's like I said, he was a very clever man, but a little bit shady also. The next one is an entitled people story. Our car was stolen in June and then returned to us at the end of July. It's being worked on and my husband has had to tell our neighbor's mother, who visits, that she can no longer park in our parking spot. All is well and good until today when I am coming home from some errands. The lady is on our stoop, asking for my husband, and if there is a way he can extend her parking allowance in our spot. She explains she is moving into the townhouse next to us to help care for her grandkids, and she sees that our car is a lost cause. She has said that us losing our car was great so she can park closer to the townhouse and not have to park on the street. What I told her and what my roommate slash landlord has told her is this. The car is being returned and reinstated in October, and you have until then to make arrangements. This woman, who I am assuming has no sense of reality, said the chances of our car ever working are nil and that we should just give her the parking spot. Our townhouses have assigned parking, and guest parking spots are adjacent. I told her she has to wait till my husband comes home and talk to him. She literally said she won't talk to him, and will just take the spot whenever she wants, regardless of whether we get our car working or not. The car is currently at my husband's father's being worked on. I know it seems petty, but I'm considering calling a tow truck the next time she does this. Update. The neighbor who is the son of the woman has gotten involved and sided with us on the matter. He also told his mother to park in the guest parking spots from now on or not come here at all. She also lied to me about moving in. Big surprise. So far I was given a blessing if she does it again to call a tow truck. We did have someone park in our spot, but he asked if it was okay. He was part of a home inspection because one of our neighbors is selling his townhouse and was only there for 20 minutes. Thank you for watching. I would really appreciate it if you could like the video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We'll see you again tomorrow.